well get used to the sound you're hearing. The Seminole War Chant is going full throat. Today, a couple of teams getting set to square off in an ACC battle. As we'll see, the Boston College Eagles taking on the 11th ranked team in the land, the Florida State Seminoles. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. will put total leather and will get started. On the run from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team and they stop him at the 21. So Boston College's offense will start this game off. And all eyes on this man as he takes the field. The defense knows they're going to try to throw him the football, and it probably won't matter, guys. Oh, but the defense, Reese, will be locked in. They, he will see double coverage. They will know where he's at on every single snap, Jesse, or else you will get beat quick, fast, and in a hurry. He's one of the few receivers in the country, guys, where if it's man coverage, he's open, zone coverage, he's open. If he's double covered, he's open. Throw that guy the ball. And the Golden Eagles racing to the line in the hurry up. From the gun, he leaves it with the back. Not a lot of room, but found his way ahead for two out to the 26. The big defensive tackles in the middle, they're not always the best pass rushers, but they are strong. I say country strong. They put their hands on you, you feel it. They lock people out of the line of scrimmage. They create separation. They wrap running backs up. And usually, they don't get out of the midst of those big boys. Back to pass. It's Castellanos. Quick strike complete. And he's got enough for the first down. It'll be at the 35. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing you're in zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. Got it. Behind the line, it's Bond. Early in the game as a DB, I'm settling in. It, it, it's okay if I give up four, six, seven yards. I'm just trying to get settled in, gauge the speed, and then later on, I can adjust to the speed of the game. This crowd bringing the energy and noise early. They'll try the run. At the 45 on his way. And how about that? What the doctor always ordered. An explosive play to the 40. I think it's really important for this offense. They get this guy going early in the game, and they're doing a nice job of that right now. Remember, he's the kind of running back who gets better as the game goes on. That's a really good omen for this offense, considering his success now early. They're going to go right back to him on first down. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Not much running room. He had to break a tackle and still break another tackle to try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Not good blocking on the play. But that's what coaches always emphasize, too. Never assume a teammate's going to make the tackle. You run to the ball, and they did it there. 100%, especially guys that are so big and strong and elusive nowadays. They're going to break tackles. Keep swarming, keep hitting them. Next guy, don't, don't assume the tackle's going to be made. Fires to the big fella. All the way down to the 25-yard line. They move the sticks. It's first down. Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can catch the football, get upfield, and chew up some extra yards. The give to the single back. He's stopped after a one-yard pickup at the 25. 
This offensive line better figure out a plan for this D tackle. He is tough to block with one guy. You might want to start double teaming him. He's going to be a problem moving forward. You saw all of his ability on that last play. Boston College right back to the line. They'll go to the ground. Runs through the tackle. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, he was trying to do it all by himself at the end of the day as a tackle for uh, I mean, the number of tackles he broke at some point, somebody's got to get blocked to help the guy out a little bit. Man, the defense was like a bunch of zombies on that box, but they just would not stop chasing that ball carry. Ninth play of the drive coming up, but they'll have to convert third and long to keep it going. It's complete. Made the snag and strolled his way into the end zone. You love as a head coach to watch your offense take the field and establish a rhythm and consistency the way they did there. Everything they dialed up was working to perfection. They go 10 plays on the opening drive and cap it off with a touchdown. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point makes it 7-0. They put together an 81-yard drive, and they cap things off with a scoring toss from 27 yards out. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. So Florida State's offense will try to get something going with their first possession. One thing to watch, can this guy get in the quarterback's head and make him take a peek at the rush, David? Dang, Skippy, that's what you want to do. You want to make this guy a little bit more human and not as much of a game-breaker at the quarterback spot? Get some pressure on him, hit him a few times. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but he can't hurt you if he's laying on his back. And this defensive end can put him there often. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. The offense set for a first down play. The give to the back. They stop him after a six-yard run out to the 24. Well, it's plays like that that will help this offense stay in rhythm all game long. If you can have that kind of success on first down running the football, it just opens up your entire playbook moving forward. They ran it on first down, now on second. To the air, it's Uyangalale. He looks that one in nicely. Building momentum, picking up a chunk of yardage, moving the chains out to the 34. Much of this Seminole foundation was built around great quarterback play, some legends at that position. Some awesome guys that spread it around to elite playmakers, and it's just a great history at Florida State. They've been up and down in the recent history, but this team back in the day, man, dope was rocking. Everybody wanted to be a Florida State center. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. The defense got caught that time, and they finally get him on the ground at the 41. Well, nice job hauling that pass in. I'll tell you, he keeps defenses on their heels. He really does. His speed is so scary. And I think back to my days in college, we used to play against the Seminoles when they had Peter Warwick and Lavernius Coles. And because of their game-breaking ability, it put so much pressure on our defense. I'll tell you, this guy's good enough to, I think, have played on that Seminole offense. And he would have gotten some looks. Could he? This guy can make some plays. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. When those guys, those running backs come in, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. Here's the handoff. And a good, solid pickup before the defense cuts him down. Offensive linemen love to run the power. Why? You run power. You run power. Then you can play action. You don't want that defense to be sitting there saying, it's a pass, it's a pass, having to pass block every play. you got to keep defenses off balance. As they get set to snap at time, winding down here in the quarter. 
snap from the gun on third down. Quickly to the tight end. And after the stop, that is going to put a bow on this first quarter. That's the end of the quarter, and Boston College has the lead. We've played one. Before we move on, let's have a look at the stats. Heading in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. A 51-yard field goal is not really unreasonable in terms of range, but they'll try to convert on fourth down. They stop him short of the marker, and they'll turn it over on downs. First down here for the offense. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Off the play fake on first down. Pocket starts to collapse. And a little too much adrenaline on that throw never gave his receiver a chance. And sometimes you got to know when to give it up, right? As a quarterback, you feel it. You can't hold it that second too long when bad things can really happen. You could tell the clock went off, and he was throwing that puppy away. After the misfire, it's second and ten. Looking for a man. It's Castellanos. It's complete to the left. Yeah, this is simple pitch and catch. Quarterback and wide receiver have done this four million times in the offseason. He catches, waits for him to take a couple steps, boom, fires it right on his chest. They can complete this probably with their eyes closed. They ran this route so many times together. The Golden Eagles moving quickly to the line. Wants to throw on third down. Trying to get to it. Just had to get rid of that one to save the yardage on third down. Defense did a great job. Third and short on the opponent's side of the field. They're expecting quick throw. Everybody, they dug their heel on the ground. They're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. Boston College lining up to punt this one away. Signals for the fair catch, and that's where they'll put it in play, just outside the 20. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? you got to have that defense you know you can go to in running situations. Your base defense where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to start and I'm going to stop the run, stuff it up front. My guys play big up front. And then if I need to add some blitzes to it later on down the road, I can. But great job in the base defense making the play. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. He tried to make something out of nothing, but there was really nothing he could do on that play. And I hope offensively that's not going to make them quit on this option play. That, that's a scheme that really puts the defense in a bind. If I were them, I wouldn't let that play stop them from trying to run it later in this game. Oh, he's going to try to get it all here. Snags it down the right side. And he's brought down after a huge completion. I would love to see him tell you that was the greatest play call ever, and the offensive coordinator is a genius. I think that was some really bad defense. And the Seminoles have it with a first and ten. The give is to Williams. And a good solid pick up there before the defense knocks him down. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. Right back to the well. And they try to run inside, and there is nowhere to go. Well, you love to see that from the defense, right? It's like bend, don't break. They've given up a bunch of plays on this drive, but now that they're getting down close to field goal range, you're seeing them start to stiffen up. Here. Yeah, and plays don't matter anymore. Yards don't matter. All that matter with these defenses nowadays is points and limiting them. Looking to throw it to Uyunglele. Finds a man by himself. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. 
And listen, the defense knew coming into this one they were going to target him early and often. He is a weapon, and there's no mystery where the quarterback's going to be looking on critical down and distances. Let's see how they're able to cover him throughout the rest of this game. Motion from the offense. From the red zone, it's Tua Feely. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. They'll leave it with him. Give him about a yard on the play. It's down at the 10. They're strong and they're scrawl. Defensive tackles, they're scrawl. There's such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance when you got that 300 plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad, you tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. Into the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, no. Man, that is so good. There's not a lot of room to work over there on the sideline in the end zone, but he was able to control his body, catch the football, make sure he had a foot down in bounds. It doesn't get any better than that. Ready to try the point after. Right down the middle. They march 78 yards down the field, and they finish it off by connecting from 10 yards out. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. On the move from inside is five. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. BC has it back, and the Eagle offense returns to the field. The give to the back. They'll wrestle him down just short of the first down. I don't even think they're going to bring out the chains to measure this one. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football or run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. They'll try the running game off the right tackle. He steps out of bounds, but it will be enough for a first down. Well, with the weapons this offense has, you knew it was just a matter of time in the run game before someone was going to break a long one. They'd just been running into a wall. They just couldn't seem to find their creases and get enough movement up front, but they finally got it there, picking up the first. Let's see what happens next. Boston College wants to play fast. The give to the tailback. A strong tackle and wrap-up from the junior. The clock has stopped, and we've reached the two-minute warning before halftime. Got three on first down at second and seven. To the air, it's Castellanos. Lines it back in the middle. Makes the grab, and it's enough for the first down before he's dragged to the ground. You can hand it to him. You can throw it to him. Either way, he's making his presence felt. Those are your favorite plays, Reese, the him plays, right? <laughs> Finding ways to get him the ball because he can make plays, whether it's running or receiving out of the backfield. They're going to continue to highlight this guy. Looking to go up top on first down. Makes the grab. They'll finally drag him down, but not before he gets it to the 40, and it's a first down. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. Boston College coming to the line after moving the chains. Trying to find his man on first down. Quick completion on the out. Finds a crease at the 20. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. 
Well, that's one the DB, I think, would like to have back. Out route, he was in man coverage. If he could have just got out of his break a little bit sooner, he might have had a chance to intercept that one and take it to the house. Inside the 15, first and 10 from the 14. They're in the red zone, and they'll pass it using the quick game. They'll get it down to the 8-yard line on that throw and catch, and the defense is backed up against the wall. You complete some of these hitch throws early, you're setting up the hitch and go. Later on, you can pump fake that, and then the receiver can pirouette right up the sideline. That might be a home run play for the offense. Going to work in the red zone, they can pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. And that pass is intercepted! Well, coming into this game, this offense knew that points were going to be at a premium. If you can't score touchdowns down here in the red zone, you at least got to come away with field goals, but you can't do that if you're throwing interceptions. That's just poor execution by the offense. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. How big is this drive? Scored a touchdown the last time they had it. Defense gets it. Fires one high and deep. And that will be incomplete. Man, that would have been a big hitter if they could have done it, but second down coming. You know, it's a good decision by the QB because his intended target wasn't open, so throw it out of bounds, and you can live to play another day here on this drive. After that last incompletion, here's second and 10 from their own 20. To the air, it's Uyunglele. Zings it complete to the right. At the 40, there he goes. And the explosiveness, the big gainer gets it to the 49-yard line. The offense will have to use its first time out of the half. You get a play like that and you feel like you can go in and finish the deal. It'll be first and 10 from just inside the 50. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. It's first and 10 from the 38-yard line. He's looking to throw it. Gets it out fast. The offense quickly calls timeout to stop the clock. Well, they're able to complete the hitch throw against man coverage, and hey, quarterback's got to be able to get it to him quickly because he knows that defender's going to be driving on the ball. So really nice job not hesitating, getting it to him, and then he gets what he can get after the catch. Receiver wasn't ready for the throw, incomplete. Well, that's one the offense would love to have back. That's a play they practice over and over and over. They feel like they can run that play in their sleep, not able to connect there. That last incomplete pass has him staring at a third and three. He's looking to throw on third and short. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. Got to give the defense credit on that play, taking everything away, forcing the incompletion. Now it's decision time. Fourth and short, and you're in field goal range. What do you do here? They've decided to try to go for the field goal here. And this field goal attempt will be a 48-yarder and not straight on from the left side. It is true as he puts three on the board. And with that field goal, they now have the lead. So they were able to put up a three spot on that last drive, and now the kickoff team out there as they prepare to put boot to leather. From inside the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. And he is swarmed under a host of defenders there to make the stop. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. All right, guys. Looks like we've got a great one in Tallahassee going on. And we have to start this halftime breakdown by addressing the play of this elite wide receiver. This is clearly a young man who, once he's finished playing on Saturdays, he's going to be playing on Sundays. The kid has different gears. He has a knack for finding gaps in the defense. And I can't remember a college player with that kind of catch radius. And with that, 
Let's send it back to our guys at Bobby Bowden Field. It's all teed up. Boston College will kick to start this third quarter. He'll start the return inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. He'll start this third quarter with a run. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the play. Let's see if it stands. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, just feels like they just haven't been as physical. And for this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that... Get that one positive play, and then maybe you get those juices going and something can start to build. This offense has a second down play. Dropping back, it's Uyangalele. He finds his man. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. A nice job by the QB there, timing out that drag throw. It's zone coverage, so he's got to make sure he gets it to his receiver in a window to allow him to catch the ball and then turn it upfield. Passing game, very effective on second down. What about here on third? The snap sets up the throw. And they can't make the play on third down. Well, I know this offense came out here in the second half hoping to build on their one possession lead. But after that incompletion, I think the smart thing is to just kick it away here and let your defense play and try to get it back to you without giving up any points. And the Seminoles will punt it away on fourth down. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. BC has the ball back, hoping for a party in the mods. Man, oh man, these offenses just haven't been able to find any. And that pressure just engulfed him. A sack for this defense. This defense, they are tenacious. And they've got guys up front that are athletic and that are so strong and they can collapse the pocket. You saw it right there in that play action. The offense has to overcome the negative play after the defense comes up with a sack. From the gun, running back gets to give. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. Wants to throw. It's Castellanos. Fire into the right complete. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. You know, I got to tell you, as an offense, moving forward in this game, third and long, you're going to have to push the ball downfield a little bit more. You got to throw to the sticks and give yourself a chance to convert these third downs. Boston College will send out the punt team. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. He'll call for the fair catch here. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. Here's another opportunity, Jesse, to stretch out this lead after punting last time. I think it goes back to your playmakers, Reese. I think it's finding the guys that have been working for you earlier on in this game and getting them the football. Yeah, and there's obviously no need to panic. I mean, think about it. You got the lead. You got the football. You got to be smart with the football. Make your plays. Put a good drive together here. They gobbled up a ton of yardage to open this drive and now in business near midfield at the 49. Back to the ground game on the left. Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow. It's second and seven. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to run it. 
After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Takes the handoff. It's to a feeling. Tackled, but he has a first down. And I don't care if I get it by two, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. The Knowles will have it first and 10. They'll go to the counter play. And they'll stop him after a minimal pickup. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. Got three on first down at second and seven. Your game to win, offense. Running back searching for a hole. Nowhere to run on that when he loses four on the carry. And you got to do a better job up front right there. That run was doomed from the get-go. Nowhere to go. The back gets hit as soon as he gets the football. Hard to succeed as a running back when you get the ball and you get clogged. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third down, going up top. A shot for the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Seminoles! I'm going to spread you sideline to sideline with all my speed, make you cover the whole field. Nice job by the offense, going with a little spread look, taking advantage of the speed they had on the field and getting the big touchdown. And it looks as if they've buzzed down. Replay wants to have another peek at that last play. After taking another look, just to confirm everything, the officials on the field got it right. Play will stand. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the final 41 yards covered by that touchdown strike. Just about set to kick it away. He'll bring it out. It's McGowan. Gets it out to the 20, about five yards short of where he'd be if he'd just taken a knee in the end zone. Boston College sending the offense back onto the field. They are trailing by 10 here, Jesse, but this is the type of team that seems comfortable in an offensive shootout. You got to hold serve at this point, right? You got to drive the field, put some more points up on the board. Yeah, they just scored. You can answer that now and keep this thing close, David. And I think you're used to that as offense. Like, football is so fast-paced now, and you score so quickly, it's not that big of a deal to get down 10. You keep being you, keep being aggressive. Just feeds the running back. Yeah, it's a bit of a surge, and he's knocked down after picking up three to the 26. to the line. To the air, it's Castellanos. Safe completion on the screen. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. And there you go. You see, you don't have to throw bombs to get big plays in the passing game. Just screen it to your running back. As soon as he catches it, he gets upfield. And how about the downfield blocking by these linemen and the wide receivers as they rip off that explosive play? Coming out on first down with the play fake. It's in! Complete, and he's lucky to get that one back. Almost intercepted. Well, a great job in coverage on the back end by the defense. He just got to finish the play. That should have been a pick. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. Here's the snap, itching to fire downfield. Missed his receiver there. It's incomplete. And this 
this offense is desperate to keep this drive alive, trailing by multiple possessions, and it's getting late. Getting some heat. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. This was one of the keys to the game. Could this quarterback, could he extend plays and then make throws and scramble situations? That time, the defense was able to get to him and bring him down for a huge loss. Fair catch called for and taken at the 30-yard line. That's the end of the quarter, and Florida State has the lead. Three quarters are in the books. Time becomes a factor both in trying to hold the lead or cut into it as we take a look at the stats. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field give to the single back and how about that play by that giant that mountain of a man on the defensive front how about the job by this defense today they knew what they were getting into a really good running back we talked to him this week it was the main focus point of this offense stopping the run game stopping the run game boy have they showed up and showed out and answered that challenge back to throw it to Uyangalale complete with conviction on the crosser Great pickup as they'll keep this drive moving, and they've got it at the 45. Well, I tell you, man, this guy's been putting on a show all game long. We've seen his decision-making. We've seen his athleticism. Because of him, they've got this huge lead in the fourth quarter. So why stop throwing it? Just keep it going when the going's good. The give is to Williams. Still on his feet at the 45. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Yeah, defensively, you better be ready to run east and west when you're playing against this offense in their running game. That time, the offense was able to outflank the defense to the right side for a big play. The Seminoles will line it up on first and ten. He wants to throw. Catch in the middle, it's Benson. Stopped after making the catch. This offense is not letting up, guys. They've got a lead here late, and they are still taking shots. They're still looking for explosive plays. This defense just has not had an answer here all game long. Here comes the offense on second down. He leaves it with his back. Able to pick up a couple down to the 27. Ball's at the 27. It's third and short. Can they avoid making that fourth down decision? They'll try to power their way ahead. He'll come through on third downs. He's got enough, and they'll mark it at the 23. Man, this offense would really like to lean on this guy in the fourth quarter, right? They've got the lead, and you just saw his ability there breaking a tackle. He looks like he's getting stronger as the game goes on. I'd expect him to get a few more carries here before this game's over. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Spectacular layout and catch. Let me tell you, this senior quarterback can flat fit it in a tight window. And the Knolls look to do some damage in the red zone. Back to throw. It's Uyangalale. Makes the catch. And he will score. Touchdown, Florida State. That's his third touchdown pass of the day. The defense has no clue how to respond right now. No, and the defense has had absolutely no answer. He's been on the money. He's been on fire, making the right decisions and just carving this defense up.
They'll try to add another to their lead. And that extra point is a big one as they now have a three-possession, 17-point lead in the fourth. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. BC has it back, and the Eagle offense returns to the field. Going up top on first down. Caught over the middle. It's Franklin. Here's the deal. You're down three possessions. You know, it doesn't feel likely they're going to come back and win, but we've seen crazier stuff happen in college football. It all starts with a big completion on a two-minute drive. They'll get the momentum started in your direction. Boston College wants to play fast. On second down, wants to throw. Grabbed over the middle, it's Morales. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him too? This offense has their work cut out for him, man, because the coverage has been so tight. And if you're not throwing to the sideline or you're not getting past the sticks, this defense is going to tackle you inbounds like they just did on that last play and bleed the clock. Looking to pass, it's Castellanos. Now he's going to break the pocket. Picks up the first down and gets down to avoid contact. This quarterback doing a lot of good decision-making on that last play. First off, nice job extending, but then understanding what the coverage was, understanding nobody's open, and then going, hey, look, I can go get this myself, and finally, not only am I going to get this first down, I'm going to take care of myself, too. I'm going to slide. I practiced this all week. A little baseball slide action, but we got a fresh set of downs. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. This defense has just been all over this guy all game long, under pressure. They're finding a way to get to him and affect his rhythm. Of course, they have an interception in this game. That's why they've got a big lead here in the fourth quarter. This guy has never gotten into a rhythm. Now on second down after the incompletion. He's looking to throw. Let's it fly. And he got a hand in there, knocks it away incomplete. And that's just the kind of game it's been for this quarterback in this offense. You've got a great game plan all week long. You're watching it throughout practice. You think you're going to have a chance to light up the scoreboard, but they're just not able to hook up. You've got to give this defense a ton of credit. They've done a great job in coverage. They've been breaking on passes. They've had their number, and that's why they're leading by as much as they are. They're bringing heat. And there was nowhere to go for this quarterback, and down he goes. Pretty nice as a defense, right? When you can go nickel, put five DBs on the field and not have to blitz anyone, trusting your front four to get the job done on third down, and they do it right there getting the sack. It's fourth down now, and this likely the final snap before the two-minute warning. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. It's caught. He will not pick up the first down. The desperation play, and that one might have sealed their fate. They'll run it. They want to take their time here. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Stopping the run is about physicality. It's about I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you up front. Really nice job by the defense. Showing their strength. Bowing up. Stuffing the run. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. Running to the left. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. And I tell you what, we can focus on the left side of the line of scrimmage because that's the way, that's where the play starts. But you don't get big gains when you run out wide unless wide receivers, yes, wide receivers, commit to blocking, staying on their guys. Really good job on the outside by giving the running back space to make the big play. The running back has it. And that defense doesn't allow a cutback, and they get him out of bounds after a short game. Operating in the red zone here on second down. Power football with the run. 
He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. You want to bring in your tight ends? You want to bring in more beef for that offensive line? I'm going to bring in more beef. Nice job by the defense understanding the situation. Red zone, field shrinks. I need more bigger personnel on the field, some big guys that can stop the run. Played the run well. Great job by the defense understanding the situation. The give is to Williams. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. The sportsmanlike thing to do might be victory formation. The stat hog would kick a field goal here. It's good. And now the lead is even bigger. 